Hello and welcome to UK Fitness Hub. My name's Travis Tarrant, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering everything that you could possibly need to know about Pez and Serene Bositis. Let's get into the video. Let's kick this video off by learning some of the basic anatomy of Pez anserine bursitis, as well as where the Pez anserine is. So firstly, I wanna cover bursitis. Now, itis means inflammation of, and we've got inflammation in this case of the Pez anserine bursa. Bursa or bursi are fluid-filled sacs, and those fluid-filled sacs reduce friction between soft tissue and bone. So in this case, tendons and bone, any soft tissue, it's reducing friction, okay? Now, pes and serene means, in Latin, it's directly translated to goose foot. That's really helpful, right? So goose foot is referring to the position of three tendons, okay? Tendons attach muscle to bone, and the location of these three conjoined tendons is right here. Now, the muscles that we're referring to are the sartorius, the gracilis, and also the semitendinosus. And the insertion point of these muscles via the tendon is below the knee, you'll find the tibial tuberosity. So find the kneecap, then find the tibial tuberosity, go medial and then down, and then you will be on the position, roughly, of where your pes anserine bursa is. Those with pes anserine bursitis are gonna be experiencing pain, dullness, swelling and tenderness at the inner knee. Sometimes even when they just flex and extend the knee joint, there's a lack of range of motion, there's real pain at that inner knee. And some of the reasons for pes anserine bursitis include uh, muscle weakness, a change in training volume or weight, so something quite drastic where volume's changed. An example of this would be someone saying to me, Travis, I've just done three 5Ks in the last week of running, and before that, I hadn't done anything. You know, something as simple as that, that change in load and volume to the knee joint can cause inflammation and swelling of the tendons, and especially the bursa as well. So sometimes tendonitis can cause bursitis and vice versa. Now, the other conditions might be muscular weakness. We also might have um, individuals that are more susceptible with osteoarthritis and also Osgood Schlatter's. I'm interested in two things as a practitioner when it comes to bursitis. I'm interested in what has caused this bursitis, why is it there, what's, what's the root cause, as well as trying to decrease the pain for the individual coming in straight away. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect the three muscles we spoke about earlier that insert where the pes anserine bursa is. So we're looking at the gracilis, the semitendinosus, and also the sartorius muscles. And we're gonna do some self-massage to inspect these muscles to see if they're really tight. Is that the reason for this um, tenderness area to be inflamed and sore with the bursitis? Could it be the muscles being over tight or essentially not being strong enough? So let's go into a little bit of self-massage of the sartorius first. We're gonna come from outside the hip to inside the knee, and I'm gonna put all of these muscles on screen when we get into them. So I'll put the sartorius up now. So I'm gonna come outside of the thigh, I'm going to be pushing in with my fingers like so, and I'm going to be inspecting the area of my front of the thigh. Have I got any really tight tissue? Does anything feel really sore? And when you work around and come to the inner knee, you can spend a good three, four minutes on this. Now, what we can then do is we can come into the gracilis. This is inner thigh, so it's a little bit up close and personal. And again, with the amount of massage depth that you're doing, start off really light, and then as you get used to it, start doing more and more. This is something I'd want you to do twice a day, every day, especially if you've got places that feel super tight. And this is gonna feed into some of the stretching we do a little bit later in the video. The gracilis, we find inner thigh, and then we're just going to roll the hands, and you'll find that there'll be a lot of muscles around here. As long as you're on the inner thigh, you will be on it at points. You'll be on the 
uh, adductors as well. So just try and find that point again, circular motions, you can do up and down, side to side, and start to really get into those areas, find any areas that might be particularly tight and really try and hone in on them. Finally, we have the semi-tendinosis, so I'm gonna bring my hands like so, and I'm gonna come into that area, again, rolling into the muscle of the semi-tendinosis, so find the mid portion of your hamstring, then just go slightly off to the medial side. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, I just don't have the hand strength for that, that's where this comes in, which is the lacrosse ball. This is really hard, okay? So I'm gonna pop it underneath and I can just roll that muscle. I can put as much or as little pressure as I want. And I've got a big surface area now. So it's a bigger surface area than my fingers. And I can make sure that I then begin to work at least a portion or part of the muscle, even if you don't quite know where you are. If you're slightly off, it doesn't matter. I might do exactly the same for my adductors and gracilis. So I can pop the ball in between and I can start to push in. I can also do this in a standing position. And as well with the sartorius, rather than kind of pressing in with the ball, I might pop myself up against the wall, lean the ball between the wall and then also my quadricep and begin to just work in circles. Again, three to five minutes in total and just spend some good time on each of these muscles and figure out if there's any trigger points, try to desensitize them. That's gonna take some pressure off the tenderness area. So now we're gonna come into our stretches that we can do. And again, these are centered around pain relief. So the first one that we're gonna do laying on our backs is a hamstring stretch. Now for any exercises or stretches where I'm in this position on my back, feel free to use a pillow if it's more comfortable, okay? So for the hamstring stretch, I'm gonna take a resistance band. Now you don't need one of these, you can use a belt or a long towel, it works just the same. I'm gonna put it just above my midfoot and completely lock out and contract this quadricep muscle at the front of my thigh. I'm gonna come up into the stretch until I can feel my hamstring start to stretch and then I'm just going to relax in this position. All the stretches I'm gonna show you, I want you to do them on both sides, regardless of if the bursitis is just on one side. And also we're gonna hold all of them for one set of 30 seconds. Once you've done the one set of 30 seconds on all of them, try to do that two times a day, for example, morning and night time. So once you've done your 30 seconds of hamstring, I want you to come all the way up and we're gonna do calves now as well. So I'm gonna take the band in exactly the same place as I had it before. I can do whatever I want with this op opposing leg, okay? So I want you to pull back. So my toes are now in a position where they're being pulled towards me and my chest and head. And then I'm gonna allow that band to do all the work for me. So the resistance of the band is what's pulling my toes and foot back. Be really careful on this one. You can imagine if I put the band too high, what's gonna happen, it's gonna fling me in the face. So definitely try not to put it too high on the foot. Once you've done your 30 seconds, we can then go to an inner thigh stretch. So for inner thigh, I want you to put your feet together, okay? Now for the usual stretch that I would do, I'd pop the hands, and feet as close as I could to my body, and then I would come down on my knees. We can't do that because that's gonna irritate the area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it on the inner thighs instead. So I'm pushing downwards with my elbows and pushing my legs towards the floor. You'll find a big stretch now in the inner thighs. That's gonna stretch out that gracilis muscle. And then once you've done this one for 30 seconds, you slowly come out of it, and then you're gonna come into a side lying position. For the side lying position, what we're gonna do is a quadriceps stretch. Again, stretching out that sartorius muscle, and you've got to come into this position. So I brought one foot and heel towards my glute. I took my hand, that's the same leg as same hand, and I was pulling back here, 
for the 30 seconds. Once you're in that position, just try and rest and relax. Again, if you can't breathe during these stretches, you've gone too far. You should be able to talk to someone, breathe nice and naturally without holding your breath and tightening up. Once you come out of that one, we've got our final one, which is hip flexor. So for hip flexor, you're gonna come into what's called a 90-90 position. What that means is right angle at the knee, right angle at the other knee as well. I'm going to rotate my pelvis up first. So you can see this is my normal position, rotating my pelvis up. And then once I'm in that position, squeezing my glutes as hard as I can, squeeze my core as well, and come forward and keep the stretch as I keep my glutes and my core squeezed. So that's the hip flexor stretch. Let's go through that one again, because it's got the most steps to it. So completely relaxed in this position. I'm going to bring my hips up, squeeze my glutes at the same time, brace my core, keep everything braced as I come forwards with the knee and not with my upper body. Those are all the stretches. Let's get on to some exercises. So for all of your exercises, I want you to do these once a day for 15 repetitions and one set, okay? So the first one, I've taken a towel here and I'm gonna pop it underneath the leg that I've got the bursitis. Now that's gonna prop up my knee a little bit. If you find that you're too far to the floor, all you've gotta do is just double it up like so. You can also use a pillow as well. And what you're gonna do is extend through the knee and you'll notice that as you extend, your heel will come up. So it's a big contraction of the quadricep muscle, big squeeze, slowly down and 15 repetitions you'll be looking to do that for. Once you've done that, we're gonna come into a straight leg raise. So you're gonna be lying down onto your back. Whatever leg you're gonna work, we're gonna squeeze the core first to keep the lower back on the mat. If the lower back isn't on the mat in this position, bring one knee up, that's gonna tilt the pelvis slightly, and you're gonna come straight up and back down, keeping that quadricep completely contracted at all times. Come up as high as you can, as your hamstring flexibility allows, and you're gonna do your 15 repetitions. Now we can also come in to abductor, which is side, of the hips, so your glutes, your glute medius here specifically. Abductions is basically just getting this leg, the highest leg, furthest away from the floor, up and back down. Now where we're looking to feel this is in the glutes. If you don't feel it in the glutes, you might be swinging too far forwards. Make sure you're coming just slightly more back with the foot than you are forwards, so try not to come in this direction Try to come straight back and if anything, slightly more towards your glute than towards your hip flexor at the front. When you come back down, if you're still not feeling this, what I want you to do is I want you to invert the foot and do exactly the same. Keep the foot pointing towards the floor if you can. Once you've done your 15 repetitions, we can also do exactly the same motion raising up and down with the leg for inner thighs. So starting to work gracilis muscle. So I've got my foot here behind the leg that I'm gonna work. I try to get that leg as straight as possible in line with my body. And I'm gonna come up, big squeeze, and back down. Up, big squeeze, and back down. You're repeating for that one set of 15 repetitions. Now, you will feel this in the inner thigh. If you don't, just make sure again that you're in a nice straight line. And then for the next exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the position on our backs. We're gonna to start to work glute maximus by coming into a bridge and back down. So the best way I can teach a bridge is I want you to think of all of the different parts of your back as segments, right? So the first thing we do, bring the tailbone off the floor, 
bring the lower back off the floor and then the mid back. And as I'm doing this, I'm squeezing the glutes at the top. I'm gonna to slowly bring my mid back back down, lower back, and then all of a sudden, I'm all the way down now with the whole of my back. So let's do it again. Tailbone, lower back, mid back, big squeeze of the glutes. Slowly, everything comes back down. One more time, tailbone, lower back, mid back, all the way up. Mid back comes down, lower back and tailbone. 15 repetitions. Now I want you to come into a position on your front. You're going to squeeze your glutes as hard as you can. Bring your head down so it's in contact with the mat or in contact with your hands. And then what I want you to do is I want you to raise your hip up but do it with a completely straight leg. So this is hip extensions. So we're gonna bring leg up, big squeeze of the glute, and back down. Finally, we have one more exercise, which is clamshells. For clamshells, the most important thing is we've got that 45 degree angle at the knees. And what we're going to do is keep both the feet on top of each other and we are going to bring the knee out and back in. But it's really important when we do this not to cheat by doing this. I'm exaggerating, of course, but if you are doing that and you're also opening up the thoracic and chest, you're not going to be getting any benefit out of this exercise. And remember, the gracilis and all these muscles that attach the inner thigh, we really want to be working the outer glute, which is going to abduct and potentially take some pressure off those muscles as well. So we come in and back out. And when we do that, we're doing it really slowly, trying to squeeze the glutes as we do it. Now, if you don't feel this and you think this is way too easy, get a resistance band, pop it on just above your knees, from there, then you can have the resistance of that resistance band. Maybe if you don't have a resistance band, you can get something like a block and you can pop the block in between your knees and you can just do the top part of the motion so you're not coming down and you're getting a little bit more strain, especially if you've got the band on and you're pulsing that top position, that'd be a really good one to do as well. Once you've done the 15, you want to make sure you even all of these exercises up by doing them on both sides. And that concludes today's video on pes anterior bursitis. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you've learned something new, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub. I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you in the next video.